time for change, to unmask the truth, to unmask the rot in our communities. Unmasking the truth will focus on the effects of corruption on women, prefer solution and demand for accountability. Unmasking the truth will be on this radio station every first Monday by 5.30 p.m. And we ask you to join us to condemn corruption, to demand for accountability, and to work together for a better Nigeria. Unmasking the Truth is an initiative of St. Ives Communications in partnership with Voice of Women and supported by the MacArthur Foundation. On this episode of Unmasking the Truth, this is a call for you to join us in the fight against corruption by empowering grassroots women to fight corruption. Grassroots women experience corruption in many areas, enrolling their children in public schools, high tax rates in the marketplace, and paying bribes to even partake in government-subsidized programs. As the 2023 general election draws near, grassroots women must be empowered to avoid them being used by politicians. Let's look at the case of the Eben Ebe women of Anambra State. We must encourage our grassroots women not to allow politicians to sell their futures just for a stipend. My name is Esther Larabi. Unmasking the Truth is an initiative of St. Ives Communications in partnership with Voice of Women and supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Women in the community share their stories about how difficult it is to stand up and call out corrupt practices. Let's hear what they have to say. I applied for the area and thinking that I'm going to get it. Unfortunately, because I don't have a backup then, I was able, unable to get it. They are now way me down because I know that that position, I was able to be in the place to do the job. When you have a court waiting, even if I thought something man. happened, they should be able to fight for it. But, but at the end of the day, no backup. My husband had a child outside wedlock, which is not supposed to be. We are not divorced, nigga. You are living under the same room and you abandon us with the children. Having another woman is to so the extent of you having a child, and you still have the God to tell it to my face that you had a child. I feel very dejected. Uh, Presently, I'm weak inside. But there's nothing I can do, so I take it as a faith, which is not supposed to be. Courts are supposed to take actions, but they are not. When I went to meet a lawyer of mine, he said it's going to cost me. And me, that I know myself that I'm not financially buoyant, but now I won't be able to push it. Because that word already created a friend. I face my children all alone. Corruption that affects me because if I work, they don't say they're supposed to give me credit, mostly for school. You no, know, say, as majority of us, they read, they wake up all night, make sure she will be to pass exam. Now, I saw some, they work their way through money till they buy their results. Don't understand. First, when they read, when you know they sleep, when they read, make sure she won't pass the exam. And first, when they buy results, and first, when they buy the results, figure mark pass first when they read. You know, it affects person that kind of way because I'm supposed to get mark pass first when they buy results. But especially the bad results, now call get my pass me. I know it makes sense. Hmm. This corruption while lies deep is deep, so so deep in our society, and it cuts across different areas of our life. My guest today is Adela Nkearemo, Senior Legal Advisor, Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project Serap. Good day, Adela Nke. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Good morning, and thank you for having me yes. here on this program. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Yes. So you've heard these women narrate their problems of how badly corruption affects them in different areas. What are your takes on the plight of these women? Okay. Um, I would begin by saying that it is a common knowledge that um, women and children are mostly the most vulnerable in the society. Hence, why they feel the brunt of corruption mostly as marginalized people. You know, women have been subjudicated for the longest of time and not giving equal treatment as men, either morally, socially, financially, and even politically. If you look at the political space today, how many women are contesting for, you know, political position? So we are always um, the marginalized people in the society. Women in Africa are the foremost victims of inequality and exclusion, in part due to the embedded corruption. So um, numerous studies have shown that women are most affected by inequality, not because they, were, they represent the largest proportion of um, the people, but because 
corruption, you know, worsening the existing inequalities. There are so many areas where women have been affected, and this includes, you know, sexualizing employment rules, sexual extortion, unequal opportunities with men at workplace, increase in maternal mortality due to the poor funding of the health sector, and being out of school. If we visit the rural communities, we would realize that we have more girls being out of school than boys. Mm. And even UNESCO recently said that Nigeria has over 20 million cases of out of school children. And you would agree with me that it seems that the situation keeps worsening by the day. It is obvious that corruption stands in the way of women accessing basic public service. So my take on the plight of these women is that we are all affected as women. I am a woman. So it is, it is a really sad situation. And um, I would want to encourage unnecessary stakeholders, be it private or public, that we should come together in order to rise to this situation and nip it by the board. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Adilanke, for that. Thank you for masking the truth with me this morning. Unmasking the Truth looks at the effects of corruption from the gender lens at the grassroots level. Let's go back to the streets and get more comments from these women on what they would do differently if they had the means and they know their rights. Like we had one of the women that said um, she went to the lawyer, but when she knows very well that she's not financially buoyant, so even if this lawyer starts telling her you need this and this or you have to do this, she doesn't have the means. Let's hear what these women have to say. Hmm. Clearly, a lot of women would not give bribes if they are empowered. Um, Adilanke, do you agree or disagree? And why do you agree or why do you well, disagree? Well, 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 I would not want to agree to okay. that in total. Mm. Because, um, you know, corruption is endemic in all sector. It's, you know, from the top to the grassroots. Mm. Even when, you know, when it comes to um, giving bribe. there has to be a giver and there has to be a receiver, right? Mm. So even if you are empowered and... You want to access um, some basic um, public um, facility, you may be frustrated to give bribe, even if you are not willing to give bribe. This, you know, the system will naturally frustrate you. Corruption is everywhere, it is prevalent everywhere. Though women are likely to be exposed to bribery risk mm. at the point of service provision, e.g., in the education and net service delivery, due to their social role as primary caretakers of the home. In 2019, a survey carried out by Transparency International shows that one in four of the survey users of public services pay the bribe, with women comprising two-thirds of all patients in public health system. Also, um, in two, that was um, last year, Serap launched a report, and that report showed that that um, judiciary the um, health and um, the education sector is the most corrupt when it comes to, you know, public service um, delivery mm. in Nigeria. And if you look at the health sector and you look at the education sector, you should know that women are most um, are mostly the partakers in the sectors because women are natural um, caregivers. They are the ones that take their children to school to enroll them, to register them and all of that. Even when a child is sick, it is the woman that will still take the child, mostly it is the woman that will still take the child to the hospital in order to access um, service delivery. For instance, look at the primary health care centers mm. where um, health delivery ought to be free to, you know, people in that local community. But because of the corruption that is, you know, prevalent in those sectors, and maybe there is no supply of drugs or anything that is being needed to treat um, the child, the woman would have no choice than to pay, you know, pay when she's not supposed to pay. Mm. So even if you are empowered, the system may frustrate you to still give bribe. 
and the receiver we may not even um, discharge the duty that he or she ought to discharge because you are not willing to give bribe. So at the end of the day, you just see yourself giving bribe, even when you are not willing to do that. However, if women are empowered, mm. you know, to occupy leadership position, to take over these places, I still believe that giving bribe by women may significantly reduce. Mm. Mm. All right. Thank you, Adilanke, for that. Unmasking the Truth on your radio station is an initiative of St. Ives Communication in partnership with Voice of Women and supported by the MacArthur Foundation. It is important to hear from more people as these women are directly affected by bribery and corruption in our society. The women in your community spoke more on corruption. <laughs> My dear, I will call she phone and wait you. I tell my leg, baby, to help me. I join she share. So the minute you grab a telephone, I will any call come. My dress story or Tommy. Now you could have bang ba. If my dress story or talk to help me, me you grab a telephone. No one any call come. Lati be. Mori pe a unko kono. Wama we pe a. Arabi ni yi. Kugwa inko. No way yo. If me no fe ge, I will call she ge ge bi. Obiri no bo she ge. I will call she. On a ti a file bo mo ti wa je ba no. Time <laughs> Nigeria. Mm. So this part here, Adilanke, where this woman was talking about the need to empower people so people have more jobs, if people have more things occupying them and they have their source of livelihood. Some of these issues of um, corruption and bribes that we have, bribes that we have would not be a thing. Now let's look at NGOs and civil society organizations. NGOs and civil society organizations get to work with women advancing their cause at the grassroots level. What more can private organizations do through their CSR to reach more women? Because yes, I know NGOs, civil society organizations are doing a whole lot trying to reach marginalized groups and women in rural communities. But let's talk about the private organizations. Okay, um, from what I got from the two women that spoke, mm. you know that everything still boils down to poverty. Mm. The first woman that spoke said that she would have loved um, to occupy a leadership position in which she will not be, you know, in which she can take over and not and take or accept bribe. And the second woman said um, she there is the need to be empowered, you know, train them so that they can work even if they don't have to work um, in the offices. So um, there are a lot of things that the private organization or the private sector can do in the CSRM program to, you know, help these women. For instance, education and enlightening of these women is very, very important. You know, we have to empower them to take leadership position. In fact, before you can take um, leadership position, you should know that as a citizen, you should vote the right leader that you want Mm. in there. So they have to participate in politics. So I think a lot of awareness has to be done in this regard to encourage them, you know, get your PVC, register um, appropriately the way you should, and ensure everything is, you know, is in order. Then on the day of election, mm. go out there to cast your vote. So we need to encourage them, and this has to do with a lot of uh, sensitization. I would also say that the private sector, corporate sector, as it may be, may help in construction of schools and hospitals because from what um, from um, survey that has been conducted so far, we see that you know women are mostly affected in this area. There is high rate of um, maternal mortality because you know our hospitals are easy, they are in disarray, and mm. you know if schools are being constructed and hospitals are are well equipped, it will reduce um, the rate of in which women have to suffer. It would reduce the rate of um, maternal mortality and it would reduce the rate in which they have to give bribe in order to keep their children in school. Hmm. I would also want to say that um, entrepreneurship training for these women is very important. For them to be empowered, you know, be a boss and, you know, provide for their family and uh, it would actually help them to to have on financial stability and it would reduce the impacts of corruption on them. Mm. 
it will be good also if they can give them grants and loans for businesses because even after empowering them or training them for mm -hmm. any of these entrepreneurship skills, they still need capital to start up. So, and majority at um, so many at times, a lot of them have to stop at the training um, point after they've gotten the training and maybe issued the certificate, but they won't be able to kickstart what they've learned because of a lack of capital. And I would also want to say that financial donations, public service, do it has to be properly monitored, mm -hmm. would also help these um, women in their access to public service delivery in order to improve these services and the impact of corruption would invariably be reduced by virtue of that on these women being the marginalized people in the society. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Adelanke. So taking a cue from what you mentioned that uh, some of these women, when they go for these trainings, by the time they get the certificate, they don't even have the capital to kick off what they've learned so far or implement it to generate revenue for themselves. Now, how well would you say that government-initiated empowerment schemes have helped women at the grassroots level? And how can we ensure that it's not just about putting these schemes together, that these women actually make something out of it, like a follow-up process, see that these women are able to make something out of it for themselves? I would say that the government usually initiates empowerment schemes, though not often as much as they should do, but I'm aware of some empowerment schemes that go on, though, at the local government areas, different local government areas. You would see um, some women learning makeup, mm. how to tie gele train and all of that. So these women can benefit by being aware of these initiatives first. You cannot you know, benefit if you are not aware of these initiatives. Make sure that you are willing and ready to learn, and you must be ready to go all out to ensure that you are informed of these initiatives from time to time. You have to take a step. They won't come to your house to inform you, but make sure you make inquiry, talk to people, know when these initiatives are being conducted so that you would benefit. And they should ensure that they make themselves available and put in whatever it is being taught into practice. So on the part of them start up and they're empowering them to to uh, establish whatever they've learned mm. after they've learned it. I would want to encourage or perhaps plead with the government to establish these women after such empowerment schemes. Mm -hmm. As most of them do not put into use what they've learned due to lack of capital. And to start up in order to start up the business. So to what end will such training be mm -hmm. if these women are, are not empowered? It will look like a waste of time and resources on the part of the government, and it will also look like a waste of time mm -hmm. on the part of the women. So I would want to plead with the government to please um, empower these women by starting this businesses for them after they've learned it. Okay. All right. So Adelanke, Still on empowering grassroots women to fight corruption. So there is the part where we need to arm these women with information. When things are happening, they say, when you see something, say something. But I might see something if I don't know where to go to or who to say what to. It might just be there and nothing will be done about it. So let's talk about the need to sensitize these women on offices, places you need to go to when you see things. For example, I happen to be a victim of um, some kind of corruption and I know a particular office, I know when I get there and I state my plight, though it has happened to me already, measures will be put in place so it doesn't get happened to another person or they nip it in the board. So let's talk about arming these women with the information that they need. I would want to say that the media is you know, the media is a very powerful tool, mm. whether the contemporary media or the social media. So it's, you know, I would want to plead with the media, the broadcast station and uh, maybe social media and lads and um, local radio stations, because majority of these women in question, the women we are talking about, mm. they are mostly illiterate and they are not learned. So... They may help to communicate any of these initiatives or any organization that, you know, is known for helping these women whenever they are in trouble. They can help us put it out there so that people will be aware of what they do. Because if we tell these women, these women to go to their websites or 
maybe um, visit um, the office or mm -hmm. check their social media and do, they may not even know what we are talking about. about These women yeah. we are talking about, most of them do not even have um, phones that they could use to access the internet. So mm -hmm. the local um, radio stations that broc that broadcast um, messages in the, in, the, in the indigenous languages, they mm -hmm. can help to disseminate this information. Please talk about all these NGOs that provide help for women during um, where that suffer the domestic violence. We have the DSVLT in, in Lagos State, and it is well known for that. So mm. you can help us put it out there. Let these women know that, okay, there's an organization that can actually give help to your profile solution or even legal advice, something as little as legal advice or mm. help to remedy your situation when you go through domestic violence and all of that. And then civil society uh, organizations to through the um, sensitization program that they do. There are some civil society organizations that go out there to to um, enlighten the, the um, people generally, not only women, by giving them flyers, um, you know, that, that pertains to their mode of operation and what they do and all of So I would encourage, you know, civil society organizations to do more of that. Disseminate information, it could be true, um, printing of flyers in indigenous languages so mm. that these women can be aware of their rights and what they can do to, you know, to get information or where to run to when there's a problem. So mm. I would say that the media and civil society organization have a role to play in order to discharge this duty. All right. Thank you so much, Adilanke Aremo, Senior Legal Advisor, Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project Therapy. Thank you for masking the truth on corruption as it affects grassroots with me, grassroots women with me today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Bye. You have a wonderful day. Bye, you too. All right. There you have it from Adilanke Aremo. Grassroots women face corruption in their everyday lives in the market. Um, you go to the health centers, corruption is everywhere. You go to the schools to enroll the children, there is corruption everywhere. And these women face it every single day. But what we're saying now is that with the right information and economic empowerment, these women will be armed to fight corruption. Now, this is a call to you to, for you to join us to empower every woman in your community. Yes, you might think, oh, I don't have the means. You can start from somewhere. It might just be the information you give her. It might just be that um, scheme. That vocational scheme or training, you're telling her where it is happening, or you are able to support her when she's done with it. Something like that. You can start from somewhere. You're giving women a voice against corruption, and the ripple effect is going to show in our society and as our in our nation as a whole. If you have a story on corruption in your community, if you see something, say something. So if you've seen something and you'd like us to talk about it, please share via uh, send us a text or WhatsApp on 070-317-56537. 070-317-56537. Unmasking the Truth on Effects of Corruption from the Gender Lens is an initiative of St. Ives Communications in partnership with Voice of Women and supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Big thank you to the producer Omozele Omoren and executive producer Tom Okewale Shonaya. I am Esther Alaribi. If you have been sexually abused, please contact a sexual assault referral center near you and speak up against corruption. Good day. WFM 91.7.